Europe is back in space. At least that's what ESA Secretary General Josef Aschbacher said after the maiden flight of the new Ariane 6 launch vehicle. Everyone celebrated it as a success. But was it really? Let's find out. Hello everybody and welcome. On July 9th, the first ever Ariane 6 rocket lifted off from the European spaceport in Kourou, located in French Guiana. The vehicle, built by Ariane Group, operated by Ariane Space and heavily funded by the European Space Agency, jumped off the newly built launch pad without any issues. This was the A62 variant with two solid rocket boosters, which is able to put about 10 tons into low Earth orbit and potentially 3.5 tons on a trajectory to the Moon. There is also the A64 variant with four solid rocket boosters, increasing the payload to low Earth orbit to almost 22 tons and close to 9 tons to the Moon. And yes, I already built a replica of it in Kerbal Space Program about three years ago. I'll put a link to that video in the description. This goes to show how long Ariane 6 had been in development. Initially, the maiden flight was planned for 2020, but had to be delayed multiple times. Ariane in general has a long and storied history, which I also touched on in that video. If you like this type of content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, because there is more to come on these topics. Let's get back to the actual flight, not my KSP replica. Right off the bat, things went a lot better than with the first flight of Ariane 6 predecessor Ariane 5. Due to a software error, it went the wrong way shortly after liftoff on June 4, 1996 and self-destructed moments later. That was of course fixed and Ariane 5 became one of the most reliable launch vehicles with the delivery of the James Webb Space Telescope in December 2021 as one of the most notable missions. Ariane 6 aims to also gain customers by proving its reliability and precision. According to the people on the launch live stream, there are already more than 20 launches planned for the coming years. Ariane Space wants to provide a much more frequent launch cadence than with the previous model and at a cheaper price. But they are still going to lag behind SpaceX in both regards. Falcon 9 can launch more often and cheaper, but then again, it does not have Ariane's capability to launch two satellites at the same time, and it also has a smaller fairing size than the European rocket. A big talking point in launcher development for the past couple of years is reusability. This Ariane 6 does not have. While seeing the booster separation was great to watch, despite the visual glitches, those two motors aren't the only parts that are being thrown away after every launch. The fairings also tumble back to Earth without being recovered. You can see them in this image here for a little while. And of course, the core booster and second stage are also expanded. Let's talk about the main stage a little bit. It uses the Vulcan 2.1 hydrogen oxygen engine, which can trace its origins back to the original Vulcan engine used on the first Ariane 5 back in 1996. It alone does not have enough thrust to lift Ariane 6 into space, that's why the vehicle has to rely on the solid rocket boosters. But as soon as enough propellant has been burned, it can continue on its own until the second stage takes over. This happened at around 8 minutes into the flight. Here the newly developed Vinci engine took over and started a long burn to get the vehicle and its multiple payloads into orbit. One new feature of the Ariane 6 upper stage is the Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU for short. It is there to provide very low thrust and also to pressurize the tanks so that the Vinci engine can reignite at a later point in the flight. The plan was to deploy the first set of payloads, a couple small satellites, which was performed as planned. Then the APU should have powered up a second time in order for Vinci to relight and deorbit the second stage. This would have enabled the vehicle to enter the final phase of its mission, deploying two capsules designed to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and gather data in the process. But unfortunately, the APU shut down prematurely after being powered on for the second time. This anomaly led to a deviation in the flight profile and prevented the Vinci engine from firing again, basically turning Ariane 6's second stage into a big piece of space debris. 
The mission was still celebrated as a success by Ariane Group and ESA, since Ariane 6 proved it was capable to perform the same type of missions as its predecessor, which will apparently be the vast majority of upcoming launches. The anomaly leading to the failure of the APU and subsequently the second stage is going to be analyzed over the next couple of weeks. Based on these findings, Ariane Group will have to decide if technical modifications to the upper stage are necessary or if things can be remedied in software. Customers that would have relied on this multiple re-ignition capability will have to wait until this problem is solved. So, is this launch really a success then? Up until the second APU power-up, Ariane 6 delivered a textbook mission, staying on the planned trajectory all the way. During the livestream, the planned trajectory was displayed in green, while the actual trajectory was displayed in yellow. Before the APU anomaly, Ariane 6 was right on target all the way. Based on that, I have to agree that this launch was a success. But will the rocket itself be a success? Well, that's a completely different matter. Yes, the order books are full for the foreseeable future and that's great for Ariane, but as I already suggested in my video three years ago, Ariane 6 is already outdated. With reusability being a thing with Falcon 9's first stage, bringing the price for the access to space down significantly, Ariane 6 is going to have a tough time in the competitive launcher market. Which is also a problem that ULA's Vulcan Centaur has to face, despite its plan to reuse the engine section at a later point in time. There are tentative designs for reusable launch vehicles under the codename ARIA NEXT, and we have already talked about the SUSY concept, the smart upper stage for innovative exploration. But just like many other European space concepts, it might end up being put into the bin. I mean, you just have to remember the fate of the Hermes space plane, which had to be scaled down significantly to compared to its original design, and then never went into full production. As a European myself, I hope our space industry gets their act together and starts to catch up and even surpass our brethren across the Atlantic soon. There are small launcher companies that have entered the scene like Rocket Factory Augsburg and ESA Aerospace from Germany or PLD Space from Spain, who have each their own unique approach how to innovate the launcher business. But when it comes to big payloads, there is nothing in Europe that could rival what SpaceX or ULA have to offer aside from Ariane 6, and due to its kind of older design, it is going to have a hard time on the free market. Nevertheless, a successful new rocket is always a good thing, and I'm glad that Ariane 6 exists and has restored Europe's autonomous access to space. What I'm also happy about is my supporters on Patreon and my YouTube members. You guys are awesome and I thank each and every one of you for helping out my channel with your contributions. If you have selected one of the higher tiers, your name will show up here on the right side of the screen, like all these fine folks you can see now. Again, thank you so much for your support. I am going to keep an eye on how Ariane 6 develops from here and what we can find out about the APU failure, so make sure you tune back in for that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.